Hello, my name is Harry Shields and welcome to the course Christian Character 1. The official number of the course is BI5527 and I am honored to be uh, your instructor during this part of your educational program. So far, uh, you have been um, enrolled in the Master of Arts in Applied Biblical Studies. And we are praying for you. We are trusting that uh, this preparation will enable you, empower you to serve the Lord Jesus Christ in local church ministry. Um, one of the things that I hope that you've done already is that you have gone to the course shell, to the home page. And in the process, I trust that you've gone to all of those links and you have checked things out in terms of the syllabus. I would hope that you would read the syllabus at least a couple of times to be familiar with the assignments and the objectives and the goals of the course. And then uh, I would hope that you would go to that link uh, on the uh, assignments for each of the two weeks that we're going to be together. Uh, one of the things that's been happening so far is that you have been taking classes or at least one class in biblical interpretation and that's very important that we understand biblical information. We have knowledge about the program of God, the character of God. And then in this course we are looking more at the issues of our personal character, your character, my character. And in the process one of the things that will happen is that you will have an opportunity to see how God has uniquely designed you to serve Him, His church, and His kingdom. So again, I want to uh, strongly encourage you to take a look at the course, all of the assignments, the objectives, and the things that are necessary. And then you'll notice that there is a link on the home page that uh, has to do with uh, your instructor, that, that is me. And so I hope that you'll read a little bit about uh, my background and then in the process uh, there will be a phone number there uh, as well as my email address and I want to encourage you if you have any questions please feel free to contact me uh, either way email or phone and I would be more than happy to help you in any way that I can. A little bit about me. For a number of years I have uh, served in pastoral ministry and I have also served on the academic side of things as well. For almost 16 years I was the chairman of the pastoral studies department at the Moody Bible Institute in their undergraduate program and almost from the inception of the graduate school which is now Moody Theological Seminary I have been teaching courses there as well more so on um, the modular side or their modular classes and then more recently uh, following my retirement from pastoral ministry in January, uh, I've had the opportunity to um, be a part of the faculty of Moody Distance Learning. I mentioned that word retirement. It's not a favorite word of mine. I don't like to think of myself as retired. Rather, I'd like to see myself in transition. God uh, has moved me from one phase of ministry into another phase of ministry, and I am hoping and asking the Heavenly Father for as long as he gives me life here in planet Earth to serve him in uh, any way that I can. One of the things that I hope that you will do either by way of sending me, uh, sending me an email or uh, on the discussion board, I hope that you would tell me and tell your fellow students uh, some things about yourself. Maybe you did that in an earlier course, but I would hope that uh, you would do it in this course as well, especially for my benefit that I will know what God has done in your life and what He is doing uh, in the uh, months and, and weeks ahead. Now, um, there are a couple things that we need to do here as uh, we reflect on this course, Christian Character 1, BI 5527. Uh, we are focusing on character and it's probably uh, important for us to think about what character is all about. A lot of different definitions of character. Uh, quite honestly, we don't talk a great deal about character today, uh, at least not in our culture, and we dismiss uh, character flaws that we see in people, whether it's in ministers or politicians or uh, leaders in the community, but, but character is very important. In fact, your character and the growth of your character will probably impact um, how influential you are in ministry more than anything else. That's not to dismiss the knowledge side of things, that's important, 
but it's also important for you to, to take a look at your heart. That will have a tremendous influence not only on your family and your friends, but the people that you minister to as well. Uh, here's the definition of character. Uh, give this some thought. Uh, character traits are all of the aspects of a person, their attitudes, um, their worldview that impacts absolutely everything that they do. Character traits um, are those aspects of your being. It's the very core of your being that influences everything that you do, everything that you say. And we'll talk more about that from a biblical perspective in, in just a moment. When we talk about character, one of the things that we often do is uh, we talk about a person having character or not having character, and we make reference to character traits. We talk about someone being very patient, or we talk about someone being very kind, or someone being honest. Or the negative side of that, we might say that someone is dishonest, uh, someone is not trustworthy. We're, we're talking about their character. Um, there are some scriptures that have a great deal to do with character, and if we're going to talk about character, it seems to me that we have to start about uh, how God is shaping your character right now. It has a great deal to do with uh, what I would like to re refer to initially as, as place, where you are uh, right now is how God is influencing your character. Now, you might be thinking when I refer to place is that I'm thinking of a um, specific location, a specific address. We'll talk more about that in just a moment as well. But I'm talking about where you are in the program of God. A verse that I've meditated uh, quite a bit in the last couple of years uh, comes from Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. And this is what he wrote, and I'm reading from the Holman Christian Standard Bible. This is what it says. He has rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of the Son he loves. We have redemption, the forgiveness of sins, in him. So where are you? Assuming that you are a Christ follower, at that point in time when you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, God took you, he transferred you out of the domain of darkness, out of your fallenness, out of uh, your evil propensities, and he transferred you into the kingdom of the Son he loves. Uh, in his Son we have redemption, we have life. And so your character is being fashioned now as a member of Christ's church and Christ's kingdom. So your character is influenced by your place. Uh, the other thing that happens is that character is being influenced by God's purpose in your life. Uh, here's a very familiar passage of Scripture, uh, Romans chapter 8, uh, verse 28, but I believe that we have to include verse 29 as well. So here's what Romans chapter 8, verse 28 says. We know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, those who are called according to His purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he would be the firstborn among many brothers. What I understand the Apostle Paul is saying is that God takes absolutely everything in your life and my life, and he begins to shape it, even the things that we identify as bad things, and he begins to use those things to um, make us more and more like the Lord Jesus Christ. So we have place, we're in the kingdom of God, our character is shaped by where we are. It's also shaped by God's purpose. He's fashioning us to be more and more like the Lord Jesus. And then, the other thing that we see is that there is also a process that is involved. And with that, I call your attention to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And I'm uh, reading verse 16. Here's what it says. Therefore, we do not give up. Even though our outer person is being destroyed, our inner person is being renewed day by day. God is renewing you. Even though we look at our physical bodies and we realize that we're getting older, uh, sometimes a disease begins to afflict our bodies, and yet God uses all of those things to transform us into the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so one of the things that we see with respect to character is that it is a process where God is changing us. Character transformation 
has to do with the work of God where he uses absolutely everything in your life and my life to make us more and more like the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, there's another thought that I want to call to your attention, and this verse is core in my mind to, to a lot of things that we can do. Some time ago, I was uh, reading in Luke's Gospel and the Sermon on the Plain, very similar to what we read in Matthew's Gospel, we refer to as the Sermon on the Mount. But the Sermon on the Plain has some of the same ideas. But uh, in this sermon, Jesus uh, had a parable in which he was talking about what people are like, what shapes people, what influences people. And, and this is what he says, beginning in verse 43, Luke uh, chapter 6 and verse 43. A good tree doesn't produce bad fruit. On the other hand, a bad tree doesn't produce good fruit. For each tree is known by its own fruit. Figs aren't gathered from thorn bushes or grapes picked from a bramble bush. A good man produces good out of the good storeroom of his heart. An evil man produces evil out of the evil storeroom. For his mouth speaks from the overflow of his heart. What struck me when I was reading that passage is that uh, reference to a storeroom. In other words, there is that aspect of our being, I would refer to as our heart, in which decisions are made, and our hearts are influenced by a variety of different things. And then out of what happens in our heart, what is stored up in our heart, begins to flow out of us in the form of our character. And that character influences our family, our friends, our churches, uh, the people with whom we work, and uh, so our character is extremely powerful, and that character is sh shaped by what's going on in our hearts. Now, with that in mind, there are a couple of other things that we want to keep in mind with respect to the shaping of the heart or the shaping of our character. And there are, are two different parts of this, what I am referring to as primary factors, and then we will talk about secondary factors. When we talk about primary factors, your character has been molded, has been shaped by a couple of different things. For example, your character, my character, has been shaped by what I would refer to as primary relationships. It should have to do with uh, the important people in your life. Your parents, your siblings, aunts, uncles, grandparents, uh, family members who uh, were very much involved in those early years of your life, the nurturing years. All, all of that shaped your life, uh, primary relationships. Sometimes those primary relationships have been a positive influence in your life. Sometimes they're not such a positive influence in your life. Not only um, are our lives shaped by primary relationships, but they are also shaped by what I would refer to as primary events. And again, this has to do a lot of times with the early years of our existence. Uh, it could be that something happened to us. Maybe we were afflicted with a disease. Um, maybe that disease curtailed our plans, our, our plans in terms of how often we were able to attend uh, a, a school or, or classes. And so there are all of these events that took place. It could be the kinds of things that people said to us, whether those are positive things that were said to us or negative things that were said to us. So what I'm trying to say to you is that your character is shaped, your heart is molded and influenced by the primary relationships and the primary events in your life. We talked about primary factors um, and conditions that influence who you are, but then there are secondary factors as well. Uh, perhaps you've started to read one of the textbooks, a, a book by Reggie McNeil. I find this to be a, a wonderful book. I read it a num number of years ago, and then when I was asked to um, be an instructor, a facilitator in this course, uh, I started reading through it again. And um, McNeil will talk about some of these factors. In fact, you'll remember them because he uses the word C to identify all of them. And so I'll look at my notes here from time to time to identify what they are. But, but there are five different things that, that influence, five or six different things that influence your heart in kind of a secondary way. Not that it's less important than those primary factors. The first one uh, has to do with the issue of culture. You live in a culture. 
Uh, that culture is influenced a great deal by uh, political things that happen, uh, major events that happen uh, in your community. Your, your culture also has to do with the things that um, you were exposed to when you were very, very young. In fact, uh, you probably speak with a certain accent um, because you grew up in a specific culture, a specific region of the country that has to do with your culture. Or the things that you like, the things that you dislike have been influenced by your culture. Uh, culture is everything around us, all of the ideas, sometimes the world views that we talk about, the influences, um, even the things that have to do with where we live, the, the environment, the weather. Uh, we are influenced by our culture, and sometimes we take those ideas and aspects of culture into our lives, and we don't even realize the tremendous power they have in shaping how we think and what we do. Then McNeil goes on from culture to talk about call. I'm assuming that you are a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. And McNeil would say that there is a specific aspect of God's call on your life. Every Christian is called to fulfill the Great Commission. But sometimes God calls us to specific tasks. He calls us to specific duties, specific roles. He gives us certain gifts to, to carry that out. And so God has uniquely called you not only to enter into his great cause, but sometimes his call uh, has to do with your skills and your abilities and your spiritual gifts, and that will in turn influence how you impact the lives of other people. In addition to culture, in addition to call, uh, you are also influenced by community. So we think about the region of the country in which you live, and then you have a specific community. You went to a specific elementary school, you went to a specific middle school or high school. Uh, in that community, maybe you uh, spent a number of years with some of the same friends. They are your very good friends of this very day. That community and the people in the community and the friends in the community have shaped you, influenced who you are, how you think, and how you act today. So we're talking not only about the primary um, uh, aspects of your character and then the secondary aspects. Um, those secondary aspects have to do with culture, and it has to do uh, with call, and it has to do with community. And then Reggie McNeil goes on to talk about another one. He talks about communion. And what he's talking about there is the unique time that you have with God. I have a very good friend who uh, uh, went through a very serious surgery. He wasn't planning on it. Uh, uh, some complications in his life, in his body, and so he has a surgery. The surgery leads to a second surgery, and so uh, he has a very uh, prestigious position in the company with uh, whom he works, and so now he's been laid up. Uh, my friend, one of the things that he tells me is that he's spending a great deal of time with God. He's saying, God, how much uh, time do you want me to spend on, on my job? Are you telling me that maybe I need to retire early and enter into ministry? And it's one of the things that he's seriously considering right now. And so he has a lot of time to commune with God. I wouldn't be surprised that you might tell me that uh, you spend time every day. Maybe it's just 10 minutes. Maybe it's a half hour or an hour. I don't know. But that time that you spend with God, that communion with the Heavenly Father, greatly shapes your character and the condition of your heart. Not only uh, are we shaped by culture and call and uh, some of the things we've talked about uh, in communion, but we are also shaped by conflict. That seems uh, rather surprising, doesn't it? We sometimes see conflict as a negative thing, but conflict can be extremely powerful in your life and mine. In fact, one of the things about conflict is that it can be a negative factor if we allow it to be, and so we begin to worry, we begin to conform to what other people want, rather than taking a stand for the principles of God. But conflict can be a positive thing in your character in the sense that you might call out to God in the context of that conflict more than any other time. And so conflict begins to shape your character as well. And then one other thing. It has to do with uh, what Reggie McNeil refers to as uh, commonplace. Uh, it, it has to do with uh, the things that you weren't counting on to necessarily influence you. 
Maybe you went to a retreat this past weekend. Or maybe you go to uh, a prayer summit. And you went just because you needed some time for refreshment or a friend invited you to go. But all of a sudden you discover that that event has a profound influence on the way you think and it begins to shape your life. A number of years ago, my wife and I, um, so it happened I was teaching a class in, at that time it was the Moody Graduate School, and the class was being held in Florida, so uh, Carol went with me. Uh, while we went, uh, I had been telling her about um, Henry Blackaby and one of his books that he wrote at that time was Experiencing God. It's influenced the lives of a lot of people. And so I said to Carol, why don't you take it with you? Maybe you can read it. And so sure enough, while I was in class, she was back in the hotel room and she started to read the book. By the third day, she had made her way all through uh, Experiencing God. And, and she told me, she said, this book has changed the way I think about God. It changes the way in which I think about my life and myself. That can happen. Unexpected things. We thought this would be just a, a good read or uh, a good visit, a good time with friends, and it ends up influencing the way that we think. Well, this course is about character. It's about the conditions of your heart. And what you're going to discover with all of the assignments that you do, and those assignments that might look like a lot, but you'll be able to go through those assignments rather quickly. And in the process, you'll begin to take an inside look at your heart. And you'll be able to see what God has been doing and what God wants to do. I hope that you will keep in mind that I'm here to help you, to walk with you, to encourage you along the way. Again, make sure you, you check on uh, the instructor's link and you'll see my email address there and then you'll be able to see uh, my phone number as well. And anything that I can do to help you to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, I want to do that. I'm looking forward to our two weeks together and then after this there will be another course also called uh, Christian Character 2 and we'll learn even more things about what our wonderful God wants to do through our lives. Well, God bless you, and I hope these two weeks are going to be very, very productive.